The Old Testament reading for this Sunday is taken from Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the second chapter. Remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, we have both access in one spirit, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When they went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. 
send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? He said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Continue confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of the very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was a man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. No rest for the weary. You ever felt like that? The disciples seem to have felt like that. If I can read between the lines a little bit, Mark records, they had no leisure even to eat. They're so busy with being a disciple, following Jesus as a full-time job, always on the move. Each day brings something new, some new teaching, some new miracle, some new surprise. They have gone out, as we uh, uh, were, were told in the gospel reading, they had just returned. What they returned from was Jesus had sent them out, two by two, to go out and preach, proclaim the word of God, and by the power that he gave them, heal and cast out demons. They've been busy. They've just gotten back from this trip, which we're not given details about their experiences, but certainly if they did what Jesus sent them to do, that was eventful. They get back, and Jesus recognizes, come away. Come, come to a quiet place and rest a little while, but it just doesn't work out. They had no leisure even to eat. They're so busy with what they're supposed to be doing. Do you ever feel indispensable? Pressured, weary, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead kind of thing? These days we're always on, always scrolling, always available in those little devices in our pockets. They're always dinging and buzzing and notifying us about one thing or another. It's hard to get away. It's hard to rest. Or some of you, as the years go on, find there's, it's hard to rest in other respects. It gets harder to sleep through the night. Constant aches and pains. No rest for the weary. No relief. Jesus has compassion. He says this crowd follows him and he has compassion when he sees they are like sheep without a shepherd. And so he teaches them. But the disciples care too. It's easy throughout the Gospels to, to see all the different times when the disciples don't understand yet, when they get it wrong. But here we see the other side of them. They do care. They see the crowd's needs. They say, Jesus, it's been a long day. We're tired, you're tired, they're tired. Let them go and get some food, get some rest. They see the crowd's need. People here care too. We've got all sorts of things going on that demonstrate that. The ladies who go to Rose of Sharon, the, the different kinds of outreach, education, the CDC, caring for each other and other members' needs. The people care. The disciples care. And yet sometimes it feels like you serve and you serve and then others just ask for more and more. The disciples have been serving and been ministering. They are asked to give more. They do and then they're asked to give more. They do and then they're asked to give more. Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Huh? <laughs> How are we supposed to do that, Jesus? Twice here is this place that they're in is described as a desolate place, an empty place, no human habitation. Maybe they finally reach their breaking point. Really, Jesus? You want us to take 200 denarii, more than half a year's wages, go who knows how far, and buy all that food and bring it back here? If we had that much money... If we could go that far and come back tonight, if we could even carry that much food with us if we did, you think that's going to work, Jesus? Well, what do you have, he asks. What do you mean, what do we have? You want us to give what little we have here? I mean, it's five loaves of bread and two fish. I don't even know if this is going to feed the 12 of us, let alone thousands. Come on, get over your fatigue. Grab a cup of coffee or four and get back to work. 
It would be a little bit too easy to take that lesson away. Remember, the disciples were tired. They wanted a break, but they put the needs of others first. There were people to feed, and Jesus kept them hustling to make sure everyone was fed. If they can do it, so can you. And I, I think some of you are like that. And it is admirable and praiseworthy to serve others, but first, first we have to receive from God. They come back from doing the work of, of the kingdom of God, and Jesus tells them, you need some rest. We must first receive in Christ everything that we have, everything that we are, we receive from Christ. You know, I know you're familiar with Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, the epistle reading we had picked up just after that, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. You know that there's a favorite Lutheran verse, that's got to be in the top three. But, do you remember the verse that comes after that? Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So yes, God has these good works for us to do, but even those are what we receive from him. He is the one who prepared them for us. He is the one who gives us these opportunities to serve. And that help, that's helpful, I think, because it's not us going out and doing the good that we have to do. It's simply receiving from Christ. Receiving his blessings, his salvation, his forgiveness, and receiving the people that he gives us to serve. But Christ is always at the center. And notice how Jesus never seems to be in a hurry. Now, there's always a lot going on around him. There are all these concerns, the, the crowds pressing in around him and demanding his attention. But he never seems to be rushed. He always seems in the moment, completely trusting that he is where his father wants him to be. And he is doing what his father wants him to do. Yes, Jesus does ask of us, but first he gives to us. First, he makes all that possible. He tells the disciples to feed this hungry crowd, and then he makes it possible for them to do that. He sends them out to preach the word and heal and cast out demons, and he gives them the spirit that makes it possible for them to do that. All the way back in the beginning, God gave Adam and Eve work to do, Tend the garden, he told them. But first, he gave them the garden. Have dominion over creation. But first, he made that whole creation. Jesus feeds us. He sees our needs and he addresses them just like he did here with the crowd. He has compassion. All ate, it says, and all were satisfied. I have, to, I have to assume that it includes the disciples, that even as they are the ones who are helping distribute these gifts of Jesus, that, well, if all ate and all were satisfied, I hope that includes them too, because of the beginning, they had no leisure even to eat. But he keeps giving. He has them sit down in these groups, group hundreds, fifties, and he, tell, he gives the food to the disciples to give out to them. But it's it's a, grammatically, it's not that he gave them one time the, to the disciples and then he sat back and let them do the work. No, he kept giving. We've had it in the words of our introit from the Psalms. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. Every time they went back to Jesus, he had more. They give out his gifts, they come back to Jesus. They give out his gifts, they come back to Jesus. Every time, he had more, and more, and more. 
In the end, they have way more food than they started with. And Jesus kept on giving. Makes me think of the the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. It's the same word. All ate and all were satisfied. Not just filled in this passing away world kind of a sense, but in God's kingdom. The crowd is hungry and they're fed. But Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God, for they will certainly be satisfied. Look at how things are transformed by Christ and by his work. This place that they're in is called a desolate place. In the end, instead it's full of food. They're sitting on the green grass. It's transformed by the presence of Jesus, by receiving his gifts. That's an unusual detail. I don't know if if that jumped out at you, but when they sat down on the green grass... That's the kind of detail that's not often mentioned in the Gospels. But it makes me think of a psalm that you all know very well. Psalm 23. Green pastures. He leads me beside still waters and green pastures. He sets a table before me. This desolate, deserted place, this barren place becomes fresh and lush full of green grass and so much food, there's 12 baskets left over. A foretaste of of the new creation, a reminder of Eden. God gives his people what they need, and he gives it in abundance. And all of this is meant to point us not to one specific miracle for one specific group of people, but rather showing us what rest is really all about. It's about Jesus. Now, yes, unplugging is important. Spending rest is important, taking it easy, but spending time in Scripture and prayer, spending time in God's Word, receiving the gifts of God in Christ. We think we're busy, we think we are called to serve, but that is more important than any other responsibilities. Luther supposedly said this once. He said, I have so much business to do today, I shall not be able to get through it all with less than three hours of prayer. Or another place uh, supposedly said, you know, I start the day, I start the day in two hours of prayer, but if I have a, a, a an especially busy day, then I need three hours. I mean, it's a little counterintuitive. Oh, I've got so much to do. I've got to get onto it right away. I've got to get busy. I've got to wake up early and, and uh, uh, be ready to burn the midnight oil at the other end. You know, get, uh, get it all done. No. No, we're not too busy to pray. Or uh, Corey Ten Boom, if you know who that is, a very... Uh, a deservedly well-known Christian from the 20th century. She said, Beware the barrenness of a busy life. Well, that strikes close to home. Beware the barrenness of a busy life. Beware the emptiness of a life too busy to not receive the gifts of Jesus, to not come to him in prayer, to receive the bread of life, Because that is the food we need. That is the rest we need. Jesus gives the gifts. And yes, he gives us work in his kingdom to do. He calls us to help in handing them out. And there is always more than enough to go around. But Jesus gives the gifts. The barren wilderness blooms with life. This lonely, desolate place is filled with people The hungry are fed until they want no more. A beautiful glimpse of the kingdom of God. A wonderful reminder for us. So come again today to our Lord Jesus. He who is the bread of life. Be fed by him. Find your rest in him. And may the peace of God that passes understanding 
guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord, now and always. Let us pray to the Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give thanks to you for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you above all else for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and your Holy Church the means of grace and the lives of all faithful and just people, and the hope of the life that is to come. Lord, in your mercy, save and defend your church, one with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your people through word and sacrament, making them perfect in love and in good works, establishing them in the faith once delivered to all the saints. Lord, in your mercy, Send the light of your truth into all the earth. 
Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Look in mercy also upon those who do not yet know you or those who oppose your church and its work. As you command us to pray for our enemies, we pray that you would bless all of those with your Holy Spirit to bring them to repentance and faith, that they may join us in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Preserve our own land in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceful life with integrity. Grant health and favor to those who bear office in our land, especially the President and all members of Congress, the Governor, the governor and all members of the legislature of this state, to all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve the people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Take away from us all hatred, giving us instead the spirit of love, and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice in all the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service, that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Let your blessing remain upon harvest, commerce and industry, leisure and rest. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Give them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all those who are in sorrow or need in sickness or adversity. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. We remember before you all those who have requested our prayers and those we name to you in our hearts. Bring consolation and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. All of these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.